doing good? So good, good morning. Again, my heart goes out to the families of Daniel, Brandon, and Ryan. Today we're here to update you on some things. You're seeing a lot of activity, so we have some folks here to help with that. Um, we'll do what we've been doing. Please hold your questions in. I'll come back up, and I'll take, and I'll try and remember, and if I don't, you, it's okay to ask me to repeat the question. So I know there's been a little feedback. We're not hearing the question, so I'm just answering or someone's answering. Um, I try. I will try and remember to at least paraphrase or somehow get the point of what question you're asking. Okay? Um, so a lot of activity has been going on. A lot of work has been going on. A lot of uh, you know technical folks. So we're going to talk about that here. So first I'll have uh, Chief Carlson talk about um, some timeline and things as we move forward the last few days. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as Mayor Matson said, my name is Mike Carlson. I am the fire chief of the Davenport Fire Department. Um, last time I was in front of most of this group was Tuesday. Um, I just want to kind of give an update with Davenport Fire Department and what our plan has been working since that point. Um, since that point, uh, we have continuously, since this event has happened, we needed to work on a securing specialized teams that could come and help us with the recovery efforts. Um, with those efforts, uh, we have talked to multiple larger communities throughout the nation who have had events similar to this. Um, almost daily, we have had phone calls with uh, Miami-Dade, uh, their fire department, and some of their city staff, um, just so that we can try to learn from lessons in other communities and make sure that we are doing things and according to the protocols that are established um, and best practices for this type of event. Um, we have assembled a qualified team of specialized experts. Um, we will have a representative from that team have a conversation with us here in just a minute. Um, and the specialized experts are not only the uh, state task force team uh, from the Cedar Rapids division and also from the Sioux City division. Um, we have plans in place to expand beyond their capabilities or timelines as needed. Uh, and we also have uh, secured a specialized um, recovery uh, team that can help with our USAR team to deconstruct the building so that we can actually continue our search throughout the building. Um, other items that we've been working on is uh, we've had some challenges with uh, the utilities and the infrastructure in the area. On the back side of that facility where we had uh, potential failure from the building, we had Mid-America had a 13,000 volt uh, transformer back there. For us to continue with some of our shoring efforts that we have done to try to secure the building, we had to make sure that we eliminated that transformer and take that out of the circuit. Um, and for them, it took several days. Uh, that did not just control electrical control to that facility, but also portions of the downtown area. Um, we finally got uh, control of that building or control of that electrical equipment as of last night. And at that point, we were able to allow the, our search and rescue team to move forward some of their operations. Um, I'll let the chief come up and kind of explain some of what his team has done since they've been on scene here since yesterday. So now we'll have Chief Halloran from the Cedar Rapids Division for the Task Force One. I uh, can express my thanks for your team and, you, and all the folks that are part of that from all the different parts of the state. They were here early on Sunday and they've, they've continuously been in contact and working with us. So Chief, please, I appreciate your time. Good day. Uh, my name is Rick Halloran. I'm with the Cedar Rapids USAR Division uh, as the USAR Chief. Yesterday afternoon, Iowa Task Force One was mobilized through the request through Davenport's Incident Command Team to provide assistance through the Iowa Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management for a comprehensive urban search and rescue team. Iowa has two divisions of a task force team. One is based in Cedar Rapids and one is based in Sioux City. Both were mobilized yesterday as soon as possible uh, to show up on site. And Total, we have just under 50 people right here from the team. We are tasked with completing the recon of the building to search for survivors and those that may have been presumed, presumed to have perished inside the collapse. That search was completed before sundown last night. That has allowed us to move to the next phase of our mission, shoring, securing the building for control and recovery. IO Task Force One has installed exterior shoring on the walls uh, deemed unsafe by our engineers. 
We are continuing to work with on-site commanders to provide search and rescue recovery capabilities in accordance with their needs. IO Task Force One will remain on site and will be engaged with this process, helping out the uh, Davenport's command structure. Okay, who's for the person right there? Let's hold on to it. Yeah, my first name is R-I-C-K. Last name is Halloran, H-A-L-L-E-R-A-N. Okay, so I'll take a few questions. We'll take a few questions today. Please raise your hand. Um, I'm only going to go to you once. So um, I'm going to start middle and go left to right. Okay, Sarah. Why and whoever city, you need to. Uh, why did the city wait until yesterday to activate this, um, this uh, task force? Okay. And the question was, why did the city wait? Well, why did the city wait to activate the task force? I can tell you that I was on the phone. Uh, we have formal processes in place. The request was made on Wednesday. I have talked to the chief throughout the incident. Um, and we had some groundwork and some things that we had to do and get in place before we could get the team back to actually do it. Um, the first 24 to 36 hours that we were there, the building was in a constant state of motion and we had to allow the building to settle a little bit before we could actually formalize on a solid plan that we could move forward and have their team come back to actually move forward. Until we worked on some of the pieces on our side, there wasn't much we could do with their team in that downtime. It, is there anything else you want to add, Chief? But you were here. Yes, sir. They were here Sunday night into Monday. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Yeah. Hi. We appreciate that context, but the search for survivors was called off. And so for families, it does feel like there was a lag period that was avoidable. Could this search have been started sooner? You were here Sunday. Yeah. So uh, we were here Sunday. Um, we did do searches. Um, this is a really dynamic situation, not just for the city of Davenport and the state, but um, all across the country, this is a large scale event. So moving meticulously and accurately from the start to where we're at now takes time and we need to be uh, concerned for those that are in the site working as well as anyone else that could be inside. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Um, Anybody else, ma'am, sorry. I'm just wondering a little bit about if you could describe the process of what your team does within the building. Um, the process description of the team. Like specifically tearing down doors, possibly walls, you know, those kinds of things, you know, uh, utility closets. I mean, which areas are you going into? Which areas do you avoid and how do you go about that? Yeah, uh, really good question. Um, we do what the building tells us to do. Um, this building, as I've stated, is very dynamic. As the temperature rises up and down during the day, this building is expanding and contracting. So it's, it's talking to us. It's telling us what it wants to do. So you mentioned utility closets or doors. Yes, we might have to go into them and look. Some of it is as much as we want to, we can't because the building's not letting us or it's just too unsafe to do it without waiting to install shores. Some of that shoring we can do by ourselves, but to do some of the exterior shoring, we have to wait for utilities. Otherwise, we put pins down through the floor and pins into the wall, we could electrocute somebody. Now we've just made a really tragic in, uh, situation worse. And so that's why you have to be so diligent and um, cautiously move forward in a in a step-by-step -step process throughout w where we're sitting right now. You mentioned the weather. Does the water from the rain last night affect the building and what it's telling you? Potentially. It depends on how much it's going to rain. Okay, going back this way, sir. Uh, just to clarify, uh, are you guys saying that the conditions didn't allow you guys to search from Monday afternoon to about Thursday morning, or was that a decision not to search so, between that time? So I'll, you can tell you, but the, uh, I'll, the only day that someone wasn't searching in the building was Wednesday. And I mean the full urban search and rescue team that left Monday afternoon. Was that a decision or was that the conditions of the building? Y'all hear the question? Yeah. Um, we have been in contact. We've coordinated our efforts with the actual uh, USAR team to make sure that our efforts are in coordination with what their efforts are. We did have personnel searching the entire safe area that was deemed safe on Tuesday. 
Uh, Monday, the building was still in motion, and from the structural engineers we had in their evaluation, it was unsafe for us to go in at that point. Again, as it was stated, this is a very dynamic situation, very fluid. We are doing the best we can to balance the, um, the building conditions and the safety of our responders. And so um, typically, when we have responses like this, we focus on trying to get there in minutes or hours is how we time things. Unfortunately, something this large, we're looking at days and weeks of how we have to do things because it's a very thoughtful process that we have to move through and look at all the what ifs before we make decisions. And I know that doesn't answer everything, but it's where we're at. Sir? Mayor, I have a two-part question for you. Have you had a chance to look at, uh, just see some of the pictures that were released by you guys to them or people of the other night, the, some of the building conditions? The other night? The, the, the documents that were released, have you had a chance to just look at some of the photos that were in there? Yes. Would you have felt comfortable having yourself or your family live in that building before it collapsed? I, I can't answer. I'm that's not part of I don't I'm terribly ups, upset and, and sorrowful on what happened um, my head has been in a lot of places um, the condition seems of concern but I wasn't inspecting it and all we can do is try and do the best we can so sir and then ma'am when we talk about doing the best we can uh, Mr. Mayor there's a lot of, of residents who feel like they aren't being heard. Are there any plans to do like a town hall or something like that where you can address them directly and, and the residents can, can voice their concerns to you? Well, I've, I've met with families and that's who the, the focus is on. But there's more than just the families okay. impacted. I'm right? fully yeah. aware and we're in front of you every day. Ma'am. We've spoken to some businesses and residents in the area who are concerned about other buildings in the area. Are you aware of other buildings in the area with structural problems and are you going to send teams in now to take another look at those? Perhaps yeah. those buildings As I've said before, we're constantly looking at that. And how is it, is that, is it going to be, are there going to be renewed efforts now? To yes, we're looking at every cycle of inspection. Okay. One more, two more, and then we're done. Okay. I have three. Um, you get, well, you get one a person. Yeah, the, the, the dogs have been on site and they have worked. Um, they provide an alert to the handlers and then the handlers decipher what that alert means through their training and, and expertise. Have they had any solid hits? They've had alerts um, that have um, given the handlers information to ascertain what that is. Um, canines are fantastic. Um, they do wonderful things for us. Canines, um, like everybody, um, can be oversaturated at times. And so it's really hard to decipher after, because they get stressed too, just like we do. I mean, a lot of us probably have pets. And so um, we, can, um, we can understand when animals are stressed. And so as the dogs give alerts, the handlers then decipher those alerts best decided upon um, the environmental conditions that they're working in. Thanks, Chief. Going back to other buildings in the area, is there any kind of a timeline of when there might be inspectors sent or, or Not assurances made to folks that are living or in businesses in those other buildings? Timeline of inspection, not a timeline today. But we are constantly, like this whole tragedy, we're constantly evaluating where, when, and what do we send and, and how we do that. Okay, last one. Has anything been recovered as far as human remains or anybody found? We can't disclose that yet. Just one That's more, sorry. Just one more. Um, could this yeah. have Last been, one. Would you have launched this sooner? Um, we, we launched it Sunday. Thank you for your time. Update. Update. Weekend, Update. weekend news conference. There will be no more scheduled. If there is some significant update that we need to provide, either it will be provided in writing um, or we will call you. But there is no scheduled update here till Monday. Monday at 10. So but if no there's.
no 2 p.m. today. The next scheduled one is, is Monday. Monday at 10. Um, yeah. And if something happens that we need to get If there's signi something significant, we will get in touch with you. Thank you.